the original organization that started about 25, 30 years ago in the DC area is called Dagger Here. Um, and over time, several games have come off of that, um, partly for political differences between people and different groups in different parts of the country, and partly because some people want to play games differently. Um, later on, other games like Darkon and Belagarth have split off from Dagger here. Those are a couple examples that are fairly similar, still very full contact, still using about the same rules, but um, you know, just split off because they were in a different area or um, wanted to run their organization differently. And you see a lot of crossover between those games. Most people play Belagarth because they want to they want to fight and hit each other with foam foam sticks and shields, and it's kind of best of both worlds. It's not just it's not just nerdy people running around. It's also a sport and very competitive, which I really like. So when playing soft combat sports, um, all of the rules and all the policies of games and events are based off of three priorities. Um, safety, playability, and realism, in that order. Safety trumps everything. That means if something would be more realistic but less safe, we're going to take the more safe option. If something would make the game easier to play but less safe, we're going to take the safe option. The only limit to the kinds of weapons you'll see on a Dagger Hero Belagarth field um, really the only limiting factor is the imagination of the person building the weapons and the fighter using them. Um, there are some safety, some safety concerns. For example, you won't see ropes or nets or really long chained flails, things that can entangle. Um, you won't see thrown weapons with cores in them. But you know, I've seen all manner of things. I've seen scythes, I've seen axes, hammers. Um, I saw someone with a glaive that was 20 feet long and required three fighters to wield. But it passed weapons check. So this is a blue sword. Blue weapon is any single-handed weapon that's used to hack or smash. Uh, for example, a sword, a mace, a flail, a club, an axe. Um, this one uh, is a flat sword, which is to say it has two striking edges and flats that are not for striking. They are padded. They are safe for incidental contact. You know, when you're swinging this thing around as hard as you can, you're going to clip somebody with the edge of it. Uh, so every surface is padded, you know, right down to the pommel. If I lose this in my hand, the end isn't going to go in someone's eye. But this edge is padded for full strikes. You can hit as hard as you like, full baseball swings, you will not injure someone. Now, the way this is built, um, you've got a core of white PVC pipe that's been roughed down to take glue, and then you've got layers of um, foam rubber cut from a camp pad built over that. So we start with a courtesy piece, and then basically build a box of foam around that. The way this one's designed, I have solid pieces of foam right along what we call the sweet spot, which is the point where the tip of the core is going to press when you're striking with the tip of this weapon. Right? So when you swing, you're going to get the most force right there. That's where we build up the most solid parts of the foam. No joints, no bends in here. We want this to be strong. This is a diagram of a shield. Shields are, the ones I build at least, are plywood core with foam built around the front and sides and some sort of handle attached on the back. Now when I build shields, I laminate an inch and a half piece of polyethylene onto the plywood, um, cut my shield edges, and then we put a layer of blue camp pad and a layer of black um, compressed rubber, gym foam rubber. Reinforce it all with tape, extra reinforcement around the corners because that's where the most abuse happens. Shields tend to get dropped and banged into the ground on the corners. And there you go, you're ready to fight. We do have a weapons checking procedure that we do. We check the pommel, which is attached to the handle. We check the core of the weapon to make sure it's not too hard or sticking out. Um, they have to be fully padded to the point where if you hit somebody with it, it's not going to... Minimal pain is basically the goal, because sometimes it, it will hurt a little bit if you get hit in certain areas, but for the most part, minimal pain. So we'll do size specs. We'll check to make sure it doesn't flex too much. And then finally, we'll do a hit test, where I'll actually take someone's back. I'll give them a light, medium, and hard strike. The hard strike being as hard as I can possibly swing the weapon. Um, and if those hurt, um, you know, if that controlled strike to a nice wide part of your back hurts, then that weapon does not go on the field. Because if it hurts you on the back, then it can break your fingers. Um, we don't want anybody getting broken by these weapons. After safety comes playability. Um, Things that complicate the game needlessly, needlessly for the sake of realism are going to get ignored. Um, we want the game to be simple and straightforward. The popular styles, I would say, um, include sword and board, well, which is a shield and a, um, and a sword. Um, Florentine, which would be two weapons held up close to the body. Um, red weapon, which is going to be one of two kinds, either very short or very long, about an eight or nine inch glaive. 
And then, of course, um, green weapons, spears, long stabby weapons, support where you hang up behind the shield and stab people in the ankles, and uh, archery. There's quite a few different varieties. I mean, there's games like Capture the Flag, which everybody knows, and there's other things where, like Emperor is another type of game where you have one person who's basically the one person that if they get killed, your team whole team loses, so you have to protect that one person. Uh, there's quite a few different game varieties, which I like. There's, I, I mean, you can even look it up. There's a, a wiki with tons of different game varieties, so it's, it's never get, never gets boring. Most realms have it so it's just the adults fighting, so it's just the people who are 16 and up. But we kind of noticed that we were getting a lot of smaller kids that wanted to come out and try it. So just so we could include them, we split it up into two groups, the, the Tyro group and the adults. And the Tyro group is basically just for anyone who's 15 and under. And it's just so that younger kids can get involved too and get a taste for it before they're old enough to fight. And Because we don't want to be mean and turn the kids, the younger kids away. They want to enjoy it and come out and fight and dress up too, so it's just a way for us to include the younger kids that were interested in it. And then finally after that is realism. And realism is taken into account, but it's never going to trump the simplicity of the game, the ease of playability, and it's never going to trump safety. The main thing is that we want anyone to be able to participate in this medieval combat sport. We want anyone to be able to walk up off the street, say, all right, here we go, sign a waiver, hand you a sword, spend five minutes to explain some rules, and you can get out there and fight. No special training, no special equipment required beyond a boffer weapon, and um, anyone can do it. It's a sport, full contact sport, but it's also a game where people dress up and put on garb and assume a character. People play Belagarth because they want to they fight and hit each other with foam, foam sticks and shields and not so much because they want to dress up, but I mean it is part of the game. It's like almost the uniform of the sport. So with garb, when I first started fighting, like most new fighters, I had a pair of scrub pants and a little tea tunic that just went over my head and got roped around my belt, and that was about it. Uh, my garb has gotten more and more elaborate over the years as I've continued fighting. I, this I built actually for a job. I was working as a reenactor for the Boy Scouts, um, and I wore this in my work uniform all summer. It's sewn and riveted out of leather. Um, there's a raven on it from my old unit, Cult of Odin. Uh, but it is cool, and it can handle all sorts of abuse, and I just absolutely love it. Um, and then, of course, I'm wearing belt flags. And some of these represent units that I've been a part of. Um, some are gifts. This is the Frozen North a unit that I helped to form many years ago in Minneapolis. Um, this colored flag here is for Indomar. Um, this is a unit that I'm a member of on the East Coast. I'm squiring to the knight that runs that unit. And this one was given to me by the Thunder Guard this year. Um, they adopted me as their first non-Canadian honorary member. Right, this is the armor I wear when I fight. Um, some of this I've had for maybe six or eight years now, and some of it I've made this year. There are some requirements for armor on the field. It has to be made of period materials and it has to meet certain restrictions. Metal has to be of a certin gauge, leather has to be of a certain weight, um, etc, etc. Now armor is not a huge advantage in the game. It'll stop one hit from a single-handed weapon and that's all it does. Um, Two-handed greens, two-handed reds still go right through it. So it's kind of a trade-off. You lose a little mobility, carry a little more weight, and you can soak one hit. Guard plays into Belagarth. Um just because it has to look sort of medieval, like I currently look like I stepped out of 1815. We have um, people that just wear a tabard and baggy pants. Or we have like Tiramis who wears sweatpants and a t-shirt with a belt that passes for minimum garb. I think one of the biggest misconceptions of the game is that it's just a bunch of geeks running around casting spells at each other and that's not what it is at all. It's not even close to that. If people actually gave it a try, I think we'd have a lot bigger of a, of a base of people to fight with because I think anybody who enjoys competitive sports would love it. It's, it's a full contact sport. You can be really aggressive as you want. I have a lot of people come up to me and be like, well, I don't want to try it because I don't want to hurt people. You're not going to hurt anybody. That's the good thing about it is the weapons are padded to be safe and aggression is, is welcome. We get people from all walks of life. I know fighters who you know, were crazy hippies in the 60s and have gone on with this because it's a culture that they feel at home in, um, where they're allowed to dress up silly and, and be a little weird and you know, go live in the woods for a week. I also know people who have totally normal mundane lives. You know, maybe um, you've got a family of four and you're an accountant back home. And uh, you grab a couple of the older kids and the wife or girlfriend and you head out for the weekend and you uh, become someone else and you do something else and you get a thrill that you don't get in your normal life. 